Hello people of YouTube, Zizix here for a product review. You may have noticed I mentioned my handle I've been using on the internet since before 2000. I'm not sure what year I started. Anyway, so I should probably rename my channel. I'm reviewing the Gigabyte Bix Bricks. <laughs> <coughs> I'm reviewing the Gigabyte Bricks Ultra Compact PC Kit. Essentially, this is a bare bones desktop all in one that doesn't include an OS memory or storage. So, you need those three things. My purposes are for work, actually. We're going to be using this to replace some aged thin clients. However, you can use this for a basic, just uh, all around desktop. Um, a home theater computer, HTPC, a Apple TV. It's about the same size. Anyway, this is the device and the required components. These are the screws I've already removed from the bottom. As I stated, you need memory and storage. The storage uh, system that this uses is MSATA. Intel has some similar devices. This is 4x4x3 four by four by one inch. It has a nice Visa mounting uh, plate. Not pictured here, but you install two screws here, you put the plate on the back of the screen, and this then slides on using those screws. It's pretty nifty. Intel has very, very similar devices. Um, again, these essentially use laptop components, CPUs, and, and parts. I got this one because it includes the wireless device. It's $20 cheaper than the cheapest Intel one, and it includes everything you need as far as power is concerned. They basically use a laptop power brick. The Intel ones do not come with the outlet to power brick cord. You have to buy that separately. So that makes them, again, that much more expensive. This one was 169. It has a 1.8 gigahertz Celeron CPU. I'm not sure why they're labeling it a Celeron or why they're labeling the Ivory Bridge Pentiums as Pentiums because the differentiating factor used to be cache. They both have the same cache. I have a laptop with a 1.9 gigahertz Pentium, has identical specs basically. Also, the Windows Home experience index is like 0.1 off so that's the 100 megahertz apparently these support up to 16 gigs of ram dual channel i'm only installing one chip which means i'm stuck with single channel but for my purposes at work and for most situations that won't be a factor to install it you just slide in make sure you push that way to make sure it has a good connection then push down you could install on the bottom first. I just chose that one because it's easy. Same process here. So all said and done in this build, buying brand new parts, uh, the cost is $277. What I'm using it to replace at work is uh, some old wise thin clients that historically we've been replacing with Dell Optiplexes. Those are about $540. So we're going to avoid the OS cost by running Linux. Uh, these run Linux fairly well if you're using a more recent distribution since the hardware is pretty new. And that's it for the installation. Toss these four screws in these four holes. And voila, you've got yourself a nifty, inexpensive PC that's capable of playing Blu-ray movies, um, some basic games. I was able to run League of Legends on this at above 1080p. The monitor I've got attached to it is 1920 by 1200. Um, I dialed down the settings to low and was able to achieve like 60 frames a second. So with League, you don't really need that high at frames. It's playable at 30 for sure. My wife and I played a quick couple of rounds. I just wanted to see what her take on it was. See if 
she would accept the playability and she had no complaints so she actually dialed up the graphics a little beyond what I had it set at and still found it more than playable. On the back you got HDMI, mini display port, USB 2.0, gigabit ethernet and the power adapters port. Again using a laptop power brick it's external. There is a heat sink and small fan inside of here. The Newegg video says that it just uses the chassis for cooling. That isn't the case. On the front there's a, another USB 2.0 port. The Core i3 versions and higher, they're available up to a Core i7, have USB 3.0. So I'll go ahead and cut this video now and show it up and running. It is kind of ironic that it comes with a driver CD, no optical drive. You can install basically any of the OS's without an optical drive. Go ahead and power it on. You can install Windows 7, Windows 8, and Linux quite easily using USB storage devices like a thumb drive. And here we are running our desktop environment. Right now I've got Windows 7 installed on this. I just want to pull up the Windows Experience Index so you guys can see that. Here I'm just going to go ahead and show you some quick gameplay inside League of Legends. Setting up just a quick custom game with some bots. I'm going to fast forward through the loading because it's kind of boring. So at first the frames per second, which I think you should be able to see in the top right of the screen, are not that great, but once the game's been loaded for a few minutes and you're running around seems to go closer to that 60 frames point. I'm playing Timo real quick, just he's cute and fun. And anyway, I'll kind of speed through the gameplay here. You can see I'm Timo hiding in cloak mode, trying to take on two of these guys at once. Probably not the best gameplay on my part especially since I misclicked around that bot like three times before finally targeting them. But I was kind of proud of this. I clearly should have lost this fight, but I decided to go for it. I used my heal, which I probably didn't need to do, but anyway, it's kind of fun. I'll just go over some final thoughts here while we're watching my awesome Teemo action. These are pretty impressive little machines. The 4x4x1 four by four by inch form factor means they'll, for my purposes, fit nicely behind the screen at work. They are very silent. While playing games and watching Blu-rays, a fan does kick up in that it is audible if you don't have any sound from video or a game. If you do, you'll certainly drown out the sound of the little fan. The CPU utilization while watching Blu-ray rips was pretty low, so I don't anticipate that sort of thing being a problem. The only downside I can see about these is the audio out is built into HDMI only. There isn't a plug, so that could be an issue. You'll limit our mod under choices at work, and depending on your use case may be an issue. Other than that, for well under 300 bucks, I think they're pretty awesome. One thing to note, and I'll show the video now, I was getting these artifacts using one of my older HDMI cables. Replacing that with a newer cable solved the problem, and it was only on this display. It didn't happen on my TV, nor did it happen after I replaced the cable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. I think these are pretty awesome for the price, and have a good one, YouTube.